Oh, well, I loved everything about it because it was a whole. It's so rare. You read a script and something will be good, like one character will be good, but every single character was finely tuned and very funny. Um, and I loved the fact that it was completely authentic um, and funny and was so true about the world at the moment. It was. Ex I'll tell you what it was. I read it and I thought, I desperately want to see that. And you hardly ever think that about a script. The story <laughs> is about uh, people with strong personalities in the workplace. People with no power and people with a lot of power in a, in a funny movie. Oh. No, it's difficult for any woman to be, why aren't there more, you know, top female anchor women? And that's changing a little bit. Late night... Mm -hmm. We think is, I think it's quite it's very male dominated. Although, actually, having just done SNL, there's an awful lot of women there in the mm -hmm. writing. There's lots of very great women writers. As the producers were a woman, mm -hmm. um, so uh, there seems to me to be a lot of diversity and inclusion in the SNL team. So I think it's probably changing. Yeah. But if you think about taking SNL as a, even though it's not a late night talk show, um, back in the seventies. You know, you had John Belushi saying out loud, oh, women aren't funny and not refusing to do sketches written by women. Wow. So in the same way as we weren't allowed to vote because it was like a dog going on its hind legs 100 years ago, we have to remember <laughs> that the development of our in inclusion is slow, mm -hmm. um, but it mm -hmm. is happening. And, and what's great is that Mindy imagined it and now it exists and it'll happen. Oh, such a great writer. <laughs> I like that I can Much take better. Res responsibility for if there's ever a female lady. I talk it's your, it started it's with, with my script. Thank you. <laughs> but you changed the iconography of it in the same way as Barack Obama changed the iconography of the presidency. So with Emma, when I, um, when I was young, I saw her win an Oscar as an actress and then as a screenwriter, mm -hmm. I think shortly thereafter. And I didn't know that that was possible. And later I learned as I became older, because I was such a fan of hers and was researching her, which is probably creepy to hear, that she had come from comedy. And you could tell that you, yes. from uh, even in her most serious roles, there is a buoyancy in her performance that is so... Uh, There's a sparkle. A sparkle, like no too, matter right? what. No matter what she, whatever character she played, even in her most tragic character. So I think she can do anything. I think she's the greatest living actor. And so when I wrote something for her, I was obviously so busy um, working on my own show, that the only person that seemed worthy of actually spending the time to write something for who I'd never met was Emma. So mm -hmm. I wrote this role for her. If you've seen it, you know that really no one else could ever play it. So it was a pretty risky thing. So when she said that she wanted to do it, I, I thought, like, well, this is truly one of the peaks of my life, existence. So really thrilling. That's not how things work, and it sometimes can be said by an ally to you mm. who wants you to succeed, is that's not how things work. And if that's you look not at, what funny is. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Well, no, and it, it's not how things work. So in late night TV, it wasn't until I think 2014 or 2016 that the first black female writer was hired for a late night TV show. Mm. Amber Ruffin, who is someone who actually came to the round table for this and spoke with Emma and me and gave suggestions <sighs> about the script. So if you think about that late night television has been set in New York City, since the 50s that it took 66 or 64 years to hire a, a black woman mm. is crazy. So when you hear things like that's not how things work, you at a certain point, it's like, well, things have got to work differently. Yeah. Mm. You know? well, what's so funny as well is that especially blokes in my experience growing up trying to be funny, doing funny stuff, you know, well, women aren't funny. They're just not funny. And you go... They don't really have a sense of humour. That was the gag, wasn't it? Feminists not having a sense of humour. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you go, if women didn't have a sense of humour, none of them would survive. <laughs> it's the only way we survive <laughs> is because we can laugh. And that's that, that's clearly not not commonly common knowledge mm -hmm. amongst a certain yeah. band of men. I mean, yeah. you know, I absolutely adore men. I think they're noble and marvellous in all their parts, often. Mm -hmm. But there is a certain bandwidth of masculinity, which unfortunately has a lot of airspace, <laughs> that's very toxic and doesn't understand that and doesn't hear it and is determined to, is full yeah. of misogyny, you know. 
Yeah, and that's how I was brought up. It's a subtle Laugh thing. Laugh at the face of disaster. There's know. a scene, there's almost no scene that's serious in this movie that's not undercut in some way. Yeah. As well as there's no comic scene that doesn't have a real sadness in it. And I think that's a comedy way. That's what makes it so good. Well, thank you. But there's a scene when she finally is, you know, she's remembered all the names of the writers. I love her in the scene. I'm not in it. Um, and she goes around the room and she names all the writers, but there's still one writer who's just so forgettable that she doesn't remember their name and she says you're six, six. <laughs> yes and i just thought yes because if, if she had remembered all their names it would have been too perfect yeah she would have been too much of a saint yeah but she couldn't remember that guy and he gives a little nod i know he, he's like he understood. i'm not thank you for yeah. trying thank you for trying i know yeah. i know my own i'm so dull so well. it was so good. yes you know, the movie, we have been talking about the movie so much, and of course the issues of feminism and intersectional feminism comes up, but mm. the movie has, there are so many male characters that are so wonderful in it, and the actors who portray them yeah. were fantastic. And John is another person who, like Emma, you know, he played Winston Churchill, not a very hilarious mm. part to yeah. play, yeah. and is also, but comes from comedy as well. And yeah. Also so, serial killer, don't forget about that. And he played a serial <laughs> yeah. killer in Dexter, that's right. So he's he's so, uh, I just love the, the people who can do everything, because mm. it's a very short list of actors mm. who can, yeah. so it was wonderful he was in the movie. Yeah, yeah, really. Or oh, breaking in. For a start, is that's the hardest, isn't mm -hmm. it? Oh no, maybe it isn't. Maybe you don't know anything then, so you're just doing what you have doing what to you lose, do. Which you've is got nice nothing thing. to lose, absolutely. Whereas when you've got something to lose and you go, well, you know, now I'm going to, I'm going to change it. Everything you have financial considerations yeah. and children. Well, and you have, you know, like your lifestyle. Yes. Um, uh, both it's are just, hard. Yeah. I think reinventing yourself is harder because when I was breaking in, Pre preconception sort of. Yeah, I had no money, yeah. I had no boyfriend, yes. I had nothing to lose. No one thought anything of me, so I was willing to do anything. Right. But when you reinvent yourself, well, people have expectations. There's a certain thing to protect when you're reinventing yeah. yourself. You got to, you know, like like your character. She has to protect. Yeah, that's right. And she her that, legacy. That's a very good point, actually. That she's yeah. when when they say when Molly says you have to reinvent yourself. So here's a great joke about reproductive rights. Yeah. She says. Okay, that's a good idea, and she thinks that's a good idea. But then her oh, producer said, "You know, I'm actually. You have to remember that you've got this. And I mean, we all have that. I mean, I have a wonderful publicist who I've worked with for years and years and years, and I'm constantly getting into massive trouble with the press <laughs> um, because that's just who I am, and it will continue to be like that. Congratulations. But my dear, yes, thank you. Absolutely, I wear it as a badge of honor. But my publicist, you know, who's just sort of says." She sometimes, when something's happened, will just reopen and say, just a, just a word in your ear. And I'll go, yes, thank you, yes, no, okay, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. <sighs> so you do need sometimes yeah. to think. 